Hi, it's Richard from FunFit Adventure. Today we've decided to come out and do a long-term review of our Drifter camping trailer. We have a Drifter off-road tourer, a Dot 6 Army is what the model is. And we've had this for two years now. First year we've spent camping for a few weeks at a time and also weekends. And for the last year we've spent traveling around one year around Australia and this has been our home for the year. So we thought this was a great opportunity. We're back in Perth now, cleaned up the trailer and to give you a, a review of how that's been over the last two years. So just give you an idea of what we've done in this. We've taken it to lots of four by four tracks, lots of sand and um, pretty rough, pretty rough tracks really. So it's coped incredibly well. We've got the standard leaf sprung suspension on our dot. New ones, you can get the, the option of the independent suspension, but we found that works really well. It's simple, it's effective, gets you everywhere you need it to. And we've had not one problem at all with this trailer mechanically. We've had a couple of other little issues I will tell you about that it's been fixed pretty quickly, but, um, but nothing, nothing of any significance. The car's pulled it incredibly well. It's 850 kilograms um, unladen and, um, and once we've got all the gear in, it's still not an issue for towing such a small compact trailer around some of the tracks that we've, um, that we've taken it. And, uh, and on the bitumen as well, it's no, no issue. You, you forget you're towing it sometimes. So great trailer for taking around Australia. It is in the name, it's a, it's a touring trailer. And certainly that's what it is. You can set it up in so many different ways that we'll, we'll tell you about. And it is a bit like Lego camping. We have so many different options, different nights. We'll set it up in different ways, depending on the weather and uh, the conditions. So let's, uh, let's get started and, and have a look around. We'll walk you around the trailer and uh, show you what we've sort of changed over time and how it's worked for us. So let's start at the front of the trailer. So at the front here, right at the front, we've got the, got the Oz hitch connected. Now the Oz hitch, I suppose it's, um, it's been good and bad. I mean, it's got us all the way around. It's been great for the last two years. Is it the best hitch? I think, you know, in the future we would look to change that hitch. And certainly Drifter are now offering a, an upgrade to a DO35 hitch. Just the lining up of the pin, getting the pin in, having to grease it all the time. And uh, especially when you're in sandy conditions, it's very difficult to move the trailer around to get it aligned just right. So certainly, you know, the, the hitch probably could be a bit better. And I think if we were to, to do this again, that's probably something we'd look to, look to change on the front. Not a big thing, because it still works out absolutely fine. And it's been, uh, it's got it, got us all the way around. So no issue there. So if we move back here, we've got the uh, got the stone guard and the the drifter rubbish bag connected on the on the stone guard here. Now what we did on our trip around, we got drifted to make a, a custom activity bag that fitted on here, the same way that the the straps go back round on the on the rubbish bag, and that was the um, that was overlift the uh, the board behind the stone guard here. And we carried an inflatable kayak in there and lots and lots of bits and pieces for the kayak. And it was great as an activity bag, great sort of storage space on the front that you could pop some dirty, wet things in. And that worked, that worked incredibly well. And we just turned the, the rubbish bag around the other way and that gave us extra, extra storage space at the front. So quite a little versatile area that. I know some people carry all sorts of things on there, bikes and um, generators you can put on there as well. We've got on the front, a post that we had fabricated in Perth. Now, this fits the ISI bike carrier. We previously did a review of the ISI bike carrier, so you can check that out on YouTube. Great bike carrier for interchanging between the vehicle and also the trailer. So we've been able to head off onto mountain bike tracks, leaving the trailer parked up on a campsite and, uh, and just swap it into the, into the hitch on the car. So that's worked well. And we have the two bike carrier, but certainly you can put the, the four bike carrier that comes up across the stone guards in the back of the toolbox here on a hinge system so you can actually lift it back and forwards which is useful on here to open the toolbox if you've got the four box four bike carrier and also on the vehicle if you want to be in the in the boot you can pop it down and then lift the boot up so that's been that's been a great great bike carrier for us so in the front the toolbox had a little bit of dust in the toolbox over the over the last year which is pretty understandable, the amount of dust that we've been through, but nothing that didn't clean up really nicely. It was just sort of coming in a little bit over the edges. Uh, nothing, you can see it's cleaned up nicely there. 
So that's um, that's been a good little storage space for all the recovery equipment and um, tool kits that we've had en route. You can see it's got the dual batteries in there that we had as part of the, the trailer. We've never never run out of power, so that's been that's been good. 220 amp hour batteries, and we've only had an 80 watt solar panel, and then of course charging from the uh, from the vehicle as we go via a Red Arc uh, DC DC charger. We fitted a Victron Energy battery monitor in here as well. Now that gives us a really good indication of how the batteries are running. The batteries we've never taken below 50%. So the Victron Energy battery monitor helps us to do that, see how much power we've got left in, how many amps are coming in and how many amps are going out, which is, which is really useful across this shunt here that's installed. And that also has a, a Bluetooth app. So you can take your phone, download the Victron Energy app, and you can actually monitor the batteries through that. Some people have uh, a Red Arc battery management system installed, which of course you get that information from there. If not, this battery monitor works works really nicely. So that's a, that's a good one. We've also had installed power outlets. So we've got an inlet on the other side, standard hookup and an outlet on this side. And then inside we've got two, two standard main sockets. We've got the mains charger plugged into one here but then we can use the other for charging other things when on an electrical hookup which has worked really well big circuit breaker on the end and uh, we've used that quite a bit when we've had power on various sites on the way around on top of the toolbox we've got a spot tracker and this is a gps tracker so it's not over a mobile network but sends messages via gps and you can configure that to send messages to your phone. You can, uh, you can send the messages to other people to track your location. And if the, if the trailer moves, it's got a movement sensor on it that also sends you a message as well. So it can be an email or an SMS message. That's been pretty good for people tracking our progress, especially when there's been no mobile signal, being able to see where we are, get a nice satellite image of, um, of us and keep an eye on what we've been doing. So that's, that's a good little feature. And then on the front, the Max Tracks, you can see they've been used a few times. Really good. I mean, you can fit four Max Tracks on there. And certainly, you know, we've been stuck in the sand a few times. And just being able to grab them off the front here is, uh, is great. And if they're sandy or muddy, you can just pop them back on and wash them down later on. So that's a great place, great place to put them. Nice little, nice little feature. The next thing to talk about is the storage. How did that work for us? Now we're back in Perth, we unloaded the trailer into a friend's house and it kept on coming. We couldn't believe how much we'd actually stored in the, in the dot. It's amazing what you can put in this thing. So let's have a look around. In the canopy, we've got the, the divider in between and it's all nicely lined with marine carpet. And that's, you know, it looks, it looks brand new. You wouldn't think we've actually used that carpet. It brushes up so well, you can get it out, give it a wash down, give it a hoover and it is superb. In there, we've had all of our food, other items, electrical items, all being stored in, in this side, and it's that, that's worked really well for us, having this side of the trailer in, under, the, under shade, under canopy, and then using this as our main storage. Little toolboxes on the sides, and you think, they're, you think they're fairly small, but you can fit a lot in them. This one, we had all of our pegs, guys, um, bits of wood for when we were on uneven ground, and uh, the gutters as well. That was that was brilliant in these little toolboxes. One on the other side as well, and we stored a lot of other different things on on that side. But it just means for those smaller items, they're not moving about. You can get these nicely nicely stacked up, and rather than having them in the in the bigger area, so that's that worked that worked nicely. If we look at the storage box. Storage box is is a pretty good size. Pop the legs down. And in here we've had all the things that we would want to set up on camp when we get to camp so we have all the items like the chairs the table that fits on top uh, some of the walls that we've had in here and it's great because when we set up we use the things in here put it away and we don't we don't really pull it out again everything else we store in different places so that was a great great system to have and certainly the the table that fits on top just on these two runners is a really clever idea that's worked so well on this trip to have a nice big table but it's just stored on the top so it doesn't get in the way of anything 
pop up again. It leaks. See in the front here we've got the storage drawers, our pantry drawers and we store all of our kitchen equipment. One to one on the bottom, a bit bigger. That's been that's been really good. So sewing all the kitchen things right at hand where you need them. Of course we've got the drawers in the in the kitchen as well. Three drawers here. Talk a little bit about the, the kitchen in a moment. Let's have a look around the other side. So on the other side of the trailer, exactly the same. We've got the nice canopy area. We saw a lot of our activity gear in there, buoyancy aids and um, sunshades, the uh, Luke the Drifter Fire Pit combo set. All of that gear went went in this side, so that that worked well. And then the other the other small toolbox on the back here. So lots of storage space to keep things in, and you've also got this back shelf with the tie down straps. We use that, you know, if you were carrying firewood, you can strap down some firewood on the back here. Other people use it, you can put bunkers on the back and strap them down. So that works, that works nicely. So now we'll talk about what it was like in, in bad weather and also in hot weather when we needed shade. So let's start with the awning. Awning has been superb in terms of it's so waterproof. Nothing comes through this. The only issue we had was in the, in the early days, was the water that pooled in this area and we used a, a tarp saver to push this canvas up to let the water run off. That wasn't an ideal solution. So when we passed by Drifter and called into Drifter HQ, we got this um, this pole ladder, the Super Peg bow pole. Just clips on nicely at the back, it's a riveted bracket on the back and then it's got this really good C-clip on the front and then clips onto the front of the awning. And that, all the water just runs off wonderfully now and it also gives us a great spot to put a light bar on above the kitchen where really you need a little bit more light so the light at the back here doesn't doesn't light up the kitchen area so that that pool has been superb so certainly uh, i think the, i think the new ones come with this but certainly recommend you get that with the uh, with the trailer so in in bad weather we've had it in gale force winds we've had it through x cyclone debbie in uh, really heavy downpours of rain, constant over days. Never had an issue with rain coming in here. The, um, the biggest problem is trying to get the gutters to work and make sure you don't get any, any drips in there and also to stop the water coming in through into the kitchen. So you get gutters with the trailer. Um, we actually extended those gutters when we were a drifter. So we've added a bit more material to them and it means we can, where the two gutters meet in the middle, there's a longer flap between them. And also on the end here, we've got a longer gutter that comes out the tent to let the water run out outside of the tent. And that's, that's really helped. The other thing we've done is on the other side of the trailer, we've now got a wall added with a bit of sail track. We can pop a wall along and then that stops the, the weather coming in into that side. Another great feature is the is the draft skirt. I think uh, I think we were the first ones to add this on to one of these trailers, where you can just add this on as a as a standard item when you order a dot now. Little poppers around the back, nice little bit of canvas, um, peg it into the bottom of the ground, stops all the, the wind coming into the into the kitchen area. It is really nice to try and you know keep the weather out when you're camping, when you're living in it for a long time. It's not like you can just head back home after a after a weekend. So that's worked well. And what's it like under here? So we've got the walls. Of course, we can completely enclose this whole area, which is nice. Now the walls that come down under the rooftop tent, really good canvas walls, strong, strong walls, heavy duty. And, and certainly they're, they're fine, not gonna let the weather in. But what we found was at the top of the, uh, the top of the eyelets or the hook on the wind would come through and and push the flap at the top and so we've added a, a velcro strip now when we were at drifter headquarters and we've got a little video of that modification of what we've done with the walls up but it just stops that that wind and rain coming in at the, at the top at the top end of the rooftop tent and at the bottom we've added a few little more pegging points 
well as some velcro along the windows and that's just really helps just seal the whole trailer in when you're in those um those bad weather conditions which was more at the start of our trip in um around the south of the country when we got to the north it was more just getting up the odd wall to create that shade underneath which also works works nicely as well because then you can see where see where you're camping and then change your setup and you can put a wall up here or you can have a kitchen wall up depends on the wind depends where the sun's coming from so that's been very flexible for us but certainly with a few little modifications little changes little tweaks you can just seal it in better than when we when we first got it and i know that if you were to order one now uh, drift to do some of those changes anyway and just to just to help keep it a bit more a bit more weatherproof which is which is good next we'll talk about the the rooftop tent so this is a hannibal rooftop tent and there's so many options now if you're looking to buy a, a drifter dot trailer of course there's all the different models different sizes but also different tents you can put on top we went for the the standard dot six army at the time two years ago which came with the uh, the hannibal tent on top Great things about the Hannibal tent, it's huge up there. It's a you know, super king size bed. So you can, you know, people are sleeping up there with a family of four. Uh, there's just the two of us sleeping up there. So we had so much space, which was nice. And also because you can open all the windows, you can get the, the ventilation through when it's, when it's hot. Nice, comfortable mattress. We just had the standard mattress. You can upgrade to a more deluxe mattress. I think we probably would have done that as we, uh, as we went around but it actually hasn't been too bad. I think um, if you're a little bit bigger and want a bit more of a meteor mattress, then it's certainly worth upgrading to that. We haven't found it so much of a, an issue. Of course, you can see that the tent is on the electric actuators. And this is, I mean, one of the, one of the great features about the Dodge 6. This was one of the, the big things that attracted us to this trailer in the first place. The fact we could lift up the tent and create this space where we could walk underneath. We're not down here trying to get into the storage. And of course, that means we've got the continuity of space where the awning joins on. If we can get from the kitchen and into bed, if the weather's bad, you don't have to head outside, you're in this dry area. And that works, that works so well. So we've really enjoyed that. We have had one of these electric actuators fail. That was one of the, one of the things we had. But the, the trailer does come with a spare. So we're very easy. Uh, very easy to change, bit of an Allen key, top and the bottom, popped a new one in, and then we were ready to go again. And at the same time, Drifter sent us a new spare out, so we had a spare in the new spare in the toolbox. So, you know, that was that was incredible for Drifter to do that. And uh, you know, just to fix one of these wasn't wasn't a big issue, so that was good. The boot shelf is superb. We use our boot shelf for all sorts of things, and. You know, just great to be head up there and you got water bottles on there, you put clothes on there at night time, of course you can put your, your boots on there if you want. But it's just such a it's such a good space for just popping things that are in the way on top of that shelf. And also the handle here, you know what a what a brilliant feature to help you get in and out the tent. Just gives you that little bit of steadiness as you as you head in and out the ladder. So it just makes things a lot a lot easier. It's not really a hard ladder to get up and down but that just helps so much into the tent. So again, we've had the tent in, uh, in all sorts of bad weathers. You know, at first we needed to season the tent. And so we had, a, we had a few leaks at the start and there was bits we needed to use the wax stick on some of the seams. But since then, you know, we've had a lot of bad weather and uh, we've never been wet inside the tent. So that's been, that's been really good for us. And then you've got the light up there in a power socket so you can charge the phone at night time nice uh, nice bright light in the tent you know we've had it when it's been really hot you plug a 12 volt fan in up there pop it up on one of the uh, one of the bars on the top of the roof and that's been that's been really nice and the great thing about having the tent and the awning is all sort of modular systems is that if we're just doing a one night we'll park the car we'll not unhitch we'll just flip the tent over and that's it you know, we can get the kitchen out, cook the meal, and up into the up into the tent, and then it's very easy to put away again in the morning. So you don't have to put everything up every night. You can just decide, you know, what how long you stay and what's the conditions, what you want to do, and uh, and you set it up differently every time, which is uh, which is good fun. So we'll just have a 
a quick look in the tent there so you can see the, the size of it. So we're here in the drifter kitchen. Another one of the main features on this trailer. Sarah absolutely loved the kitchen. Great thing about it is that you've got so much, so much space to work on. So you can have a store your few items down here. We had our kitchen bag down here. And then you've got a great surface for preparation of, of food. And on the back, we've got the, the twin burner. Gas bottle just hooks out around the sides. And you know, there's pros and, pros and cons with that. You do have to connect the, the gas bottle up each time. But, you know, it's a couple of minutes job to, to grab a gas bottle and, and connect it up. Or you could change it to a different stove and go for a, a longer uh, a longer hose on a, a lower pressure stove. Of course, the disadvantage with the kitchen is that it's not so easy just to stop by the side of the road and pull it out. It is, I mean, if you're going to make lunch, then fair enough, you can, you can set it up. Or you could just take the, the two return pieces off and just have this bit out. And, uh, and get your lunch ready there. We carry, well, we carried a, a jet boil with us as well. So we would just stop the trailer, grab the jet boil out, and make our make our coffee up on the on the back of the trailer, rather than get the kitchen out if you just wanted a, a quick stop. We've got the uh, the washing up bowls here. The water just plugs into a pump outlet at the back, into the into the tap here. We've also connected a caravan filter on there which is which has worked really well for us and we change that every every few months storage space down here and then you've got your three drawers and the the evercool fridge the evercool fridge fits into that space nice and snugly been really good never had an issue with the fridge at all that's worked really well on the way around it's great just to have all your your gear there we've had two fridges so we've had a fridge in the car which is, you know, drinks and lunch, that sort of thing. And then this has really been all of our dinner items in the in the fridge here. So you've got everything in this space just to be able to grab, as well as your pots and pans, herbs, spices, all in your pantry drawers here. So the kitchen has worked superbly well. And I don't think we would, we, we wouldn't change this kitchen because it is so good and we love this return piece as well. And if you can, you know, the flexibility of having the jet boil stopping for coffees just means that you've got the, the best of both worlds. So that's our long-term review of the Drifter Dot 6 Army. Would we buy this trailer again if we were going to be going around Australia? Absolutely. It's been the best trailer for the job. It's simple, it's effective, it's flexible. All the different configurations you can have in setups. It's got lots of storage great suspension, gets you anywhere, it's light enough to tow. So a combination of all those things has, mean, has meant we can go anywhere we want, camp anywhere we want, live off the grid for as long as we want. We've got the two water tanks under there, which is you know two 80 litre water tanks. So enough water to have showers and um, be off the grid for a good amount of time. Lots of battery power. So it's just it just works so well. It's simple and it's effective. So certainly if we were making that choice again, this is what we would go for. So I hope you've enjoyed our review of the Dot 6. Any questions, please pop us an email or comment on YouTube or Facebook. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, also at FunFit Adventure on, on Facebook as well as Instagram. Thanks for watching.